Hey guys, welcome to this installment of EAP TV. Today I'm gonna to be going through some questions that you guys sent into us. Coming up. All right guys, so the first question we have comes from Kenji Ignacio, and I hope I said your name right. He basically wants to know what he could be doing in the meantime before he's passed his exam to build up his presence on social media. Now I have a two part response to that question and the first part of my response is gonna deal with the platform that you should start using immediately. That being Facebook. Facebook is the most important platform for real estate agents to be leveraging today. There is an increase in competition and an increase in saturation happening on Facebook, but that still doesn't negate the fact that Facebook is offering up the best potential ROI compared to any other type of ad platform or short term strategy for generating leads. Now you can take advantage of advertising and the different strategies available there when you've passed your real estate exam but in the meantime you could start building up an organic audience start inviting your friends to your page start posting content to Facebook post it into groups start building up a following and that segues perfectly into the second part of my response that being the content in order to succeed on social media networks you need to have a foundation of content and you can definitely start curating real estate related content before you've even passed your exam you could do long form posts on Facebook I don't know if you have a website or a blogging platform to maybe start building out content there but if you don't there are definitely other options when it comes to building out the content available most content is gonna boil down to three main categories for everyone that being audio written and video so blogs podcasts and video content. The sooner you can start exploring video specifically, the faster you're gonna start seeing momentum build up. Regardless of the outlet you choose though, it all comes down to how much value you're offering to potential prospects. And that all starts with the content. So build up that content, get on Facebook and get going. The next question comes from our friend, Beth Sterner. Does anyone know if there's an incentive for referring agents to EAP? Yes, there is. If you are interested in referring business our way, then you can email tyler at easyagentpro.com. And if you are a Lead Sites user, you have access to the Help Center. You can also just search in the Help Center. There's an article detailing the process for referring business our way, as well as the incentives that go along with that. Question number three comes from Tyson. I like the new squeeze page templates. Are there more to come? Absolutely, guys. We're planning on building out more and more squeeze pages as we move throughout the rest of this year. And if you haven't seen it yet, I did do a video not too long ago about two of the most recent landing pages that we've made available to lead site users. I'm gonna have the link to that video right down below in the description. In that video, you're gonna see me talking about how you can make it easier for clients to schedule a time to meet with you, as well as giving clients the ability to opt into a form of yours using the one-click Facebook option. The next question we have comes from our BeatZillow Facebook group. Hi friends, looking for some help on which campaign objective to use for creating a Facebook ad to promote my listing and hopefully get some inquiries on it. Any suggestions? TIA. Thank you in advance. This is actually an incredibly common question and that's because there's a lot of different objectives to choose from when you're launching your Facebook ads. So I think what would be most helpful is if we actually jumped into the Facebook ads manager and broke down some of the objectives that you'll be using from here moving forward. Okay, so here we are in the ads manager. In the top right hand corner, you have the create ad button right here. So let's select that. And then from there, you're gonna be presented with a wide range of different options here. You've got consideration, conversion, and awareness. So the main three objectives that you'll be using from here moving forward are gonna be traffic, lead generation, and conversions. So traffic is just meant to drive a large volume of people back to your website, and that typically works really well, especially at the early stages of your site when you haven't built up much momentum and there haven't been a lot of people visiting your website. This is a great way to get the ball rolling. And you can see down here below, you've got traffic as your objective. You can name your campaign. You can create a split test. And it does give you a little insight into what this objective does. So send more people to a specific destination on or off Facebook. Next, you have lead generation. And when you use this objective, you're gonna be taking advantage of native lead capture forms available on Facebook, meaning you don't have the opportunity to use the Facebook Facebook ad and squeeze page combination. What are the pros to doing this? The Facebook lead capture forms offer very clear, clean and concise data, but the biggest drawback that I've noticed with these is that they don't convert as well as using the Facebook ad squeeze page combination. Now that being said, it might perform different for you in your specific market, so it's certainly worth playing around with. You can definitely offer up a free ebook and this is a great way to give someone immediate access to that. But in most scenarios, I would highly encourage you to stick with using a standard landing page, so your squeeze pages paired with a Facebook ad. And finally, we have conversions. And this is gonna be the objective you're gonna be using most often. And this does require that you set up whatever the redirect page is, whatever your thank you page is. So not the landing page itself, but the page that you're sending people to after they've opted in to your landing page. That's the page you wanna designate as your custom conversion. There is a video that I created detailing the entire process. It's a little hard to explain without walking you through on the video. So there's gonna be a link in the description below if you wanna check that out and get a little more insight on how to create that custom conversion. 
But basically, using conversions as your ad is gonna help you reach people that are more likely to fill out the forms on your landing page. You can see down here below, get people to take valuable action on your website or app, such as adding payment info or making a purchase. Use the Facebook pixel or app events to track and measure conversions. Those are gonna be the three objectives that you utilize most often moving forward. Typically, you wanna be sticking with custom conversions, but if you wanna experiment with lead generation and traffic, I'm not gonna say no to that. Our last question again comes from the BeatZillow group and our friend Jonathan. He asks, how many clicks have you received? Leads, it seems I get a lot of clicks on my ads, but no leads. Now, this was actually a question that he had in response to someone who shared their ad in the BeatZillow group. It was a very clever ad. I believe it was Seth who shared it. And if that's the case, that means you need to reevaluate the landing page itself because the ad is doing its job. It's driving people back to your landing page. And if they're not opting in, then that might mean there's a disconnect in terms of the messaging. So your Facebook ad might be offering something up that's not really fulfilled when the user lands on your landing page or the value proposition of your landing page isn't great enough to get the user to opt in. So just think about how you can add more value to the page that the user is landing on. If if the list of single story homes isn't cutting it, then throw in a free ebook, a buyer's guide, for example. And if that's not cutting it, then also add a video and start establishing a face-to-face -face connection and building trust on the landing page. Take it by stages, but if you found a Facebook ad that's getting that many clicks and it's performing really well, then I would highly encourage you to keep from abandoning that angle. Just rework your landing page and find a way to make it work better. And that's all I got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button right down below. And if you are new to the channel, consider subscribing. We are now posting content daily, Monday through Friday. And until next time, guys, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.